Voice is an incredibly powerful tool to build agents with. Click here to learn how to enable it in your project. But building AI agents for voice needs a bit of a different mindset to building for text. In this video, we'll share our five best practices on building voice-based AI agents. First up, use audio cues. This feature lets you play a sound after the user says something, and it helps them understand that their input has been received. That way, they're not sitting there wondering if your agent has heard them or not while it works out what to do next. You can enable this in the general tab of your project settings, and there's a bunch of different sounds to choose from. So when Daniel orders his feast for the night, he knows the agent isn't gonna leave him hungry. Geez, Daniel, that's a lot of food. Secondly, make sure your agent sounds like a human. Here at VoiceFlow, we talk about building conversational agents, and a conversational agent should be conversational. You can use the prompt step to build human sounding responses rather than a traditional phone system, like where it says, I'm accessing your account and thanks for calling. Your call is important to us. Those kind of responses suck. Just use this with moderation. Sometimes it is okay to script responses directly rather than AI generating them. Just make sure you write a good script. Next, filler words are a really powerful tool. Daniel should have finished his dinner by now, and he's experimented with this a lot. So let's go hear his thoughts. Oh, hey. So when you're designing for a voice AI agent, the main thing is you want to identify where there might be latency in your project. So for example, if you're doing multiple API calls followed by some heavy JavaScript, you know what a baseline that it's going to take a second or two to actually process that. And so that's the perfect place to inject a custom filler word. It's like when you're talking to a receptionist on the phone and they're telling you to give them a minute as they look up your file or give them a minute as they check the calendar. So this is where you want to inject those filler words to give it a much more natural experience because there's going to be latency regardless if you're processing things like API calls and JavaScript. Now the key thing with a voice flow that's really different is that it allows you to add in a hard-coded message using the message step. Now, this is processed instantly from voice flow, so there's minimal latency, and this is actually what the user will hear immediately once it transitions to that block. So if we go into our project here, you can see that I've got about half of our appointment booking flow. Now, this flow is taking what a user is saying, it's checking the calendar, it's finding times and then confirming them with the user. Now, you can see here on the check calendar block, there's a ton of stuff going on. So I've got an AI set here that's determining the time based on the current time and what I said. I've got JavaScript, then uh, transforming that to create an end time. I've got an API call that's checking my calendar and returning uh, available slots. And then I've got an AI step to summarize all those times and present it to the user. So we know that at minimum, there's gonna be a couple seconds here where the system just needs to process. And that's where I wanna inject a filler word. So if I go ahead and drag out a message step here, and I type in something like, let me check the calendar, when your agent is actually running in production, the first thing it's gonna send is let me check the calendar, and it's gonna send that instantly as soon as it captures the information. And while it's speaking that out to the user, it's actually processing all of this in the background. So from the user's perspective, it's actually a much shorter time to get to their answer because you've injected this custom filler word. So that's a key thing when you're designing with voice is to figure out where in your flow you need to put these filler words in and then actually making sure that they feel natural and organic to the experience. All right, I'm gonna get back to eating now. Thanks, Daniel. People are really verbose when they talk, especially if they're not eating a sandwich in the process. They're a lot more verbose than when they type. For example, rather than saying schedule a return, they might say my order was the wrong size and this made me really sad and I need to return it. Can you help me schedule a pickup? So, our fourth tip is to consider using a prompt step to summarize the question and understand the user's true intent. This is especially important when dealing with complex, open-ended workflows where they could be asking one of a bunch of different things. And finally, be smart about how you capture data. Some things are really easy to type, but are much harder to say, or are just really annoying to say. Going back to our returns example, asking for a transaction ID isn't a huge deal of a text. People can copy paste that from the email pretty easily. But asking them to say this monstrosity over the phone? Well, that's a bit cruel. Now, a really cool part about voice on voice flow is that your agent already knows the caller's phone number, so you don't need to ask for it. So you could check for recent orders that match their phone number before prompting for that transaction ID as a fallback. That's a much better user experience. So that's five best practices we recommend following when building voice AI agents. If you've tried building a voice-based agent, what are your tips? Let us know in the comments down below. 
Not already tried setting up voice? Check out this video to learn how to get set up.